find ourselves at the DART conference the, uh, for development of antiretroviral therapy. I think a lot of people are under the impression that we already have a lot of antiretroviral therapy. Why do we need to develop more treatments for patients? Uh, there are a number of reasons. First and foremost, the, the treatments we have now are great, but um, I don't think there's such a thing as a perfect drug. I either have complicated drug interactions, there's uh, toxicity, cost issues, there's dosing issues, and so essentially all these drugs can be improved on. So that's the first thing. But I think more importantly, the second thing, that there's a, there are many needs that our patients have that are not met by cancer retroviral drugs. And there are two big ones. Um, uh, it's HIV eradication cure. One of the current drugs are going to cure people. And two is that there is this residual disease um, that we believe is due to product inflammation uh, that um, doesn't seem to be reversed by current therapists. You were talking about that this morning. Can you tell us a little bit more about this inflammation process? Yeah, so I mean, if you take a look at a well-treated person on long-term therapy, their levels of inflammation may be I don't know, twice that in a HIV-negative person. And having that excess inflammation is associated with a subtle but I think real um, uh, effect in terms of long-term outcomes. And we have been trying to figure out the cause of that excess activation, and we think we have at least four candidates. Um, one is CMV, which I talked about here. Uh, two is... Um, Can you tell us what CMV is? CMV is a, is a very common viral infection that typically doesn't cause any disease. The majority of uh, adults in this country are infected with it. Um, but for some reason, when people acquire CMV and they have HIV, the impact of CMV on inflammation is accelerated. So that's, that's the major thing that we talked about here today, but there are other things like the translocation, the so-called leaky gut, and, and other viruses that are probably also contributing to this, this persistent inflammation.